Okay, Chair, good morning to everyone. Uh, members present, we have Ms. Boshoff, Mr. Dango, yeah. Mr. Khai, Ms. Moshodi, and Mr. Moimang. Oh, okay. And I didn't apologize we received from apology from Mr. Lont and from Ms. Mamarekane. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Tim and uh, Ms. Matevula. Maybe they are still coming still in oh, because okay. I didn't receive anything from them. Honorable oh, okay. Chair? Yes, Honorable Bosco. Um, Honorable Brata Seth said he may join us later. I'm just writing to him to find out whether it's still on or not. I'll let you know. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. Um, yeah, we still have two minutes. Uh, we'll just open at exactly 10 and then uh, allow the ministers and uh, to introduce the delegation. And uh, yeah, we, we, and then continue. Um, Chairperson, the on the apologies, yes. I know that the committee chair, the committee secretary is not noting the apology of the DM, who okay. is not with us, who is yes. traveling to Namibia but also okay. my request to leave early um, mm -hmm. to fulfill my other responsibilities as acting minister of health on the entry meeting. Okay, well, we do appreciate uh, minister. We received the apology for, for you for last week, we, which we accepted. Uh, we are happy that you managed uh, to juggle your program uh, to accommodate us uh, in this meeting. Uh, thank you very much. We also received that uh, apology that uh, by 12, uh, you should be attending to other responsibilities. And uh, I indicated that hopefully by that time, uh, we'll be done uh, uh, with the meeting. Yeah. Thank you very much. Chair, I, I, I think it's a miss. I requested to leave at 11. Oh, at 11. Oh, oh yes, sorry. Chair. Okay. Please. Paul said at 12. <laughs> so it's a mistake. All right. Okay. Yes, so, uh, Honorable Professor. Okay, um, Honorable Barter Seth is struggling to join, but he will be on the platform. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Shaw. Okay. Okay, uh, I think it's 10 o'clock now. Um, uh, let, let me formally open the meeting. Uh, welcome, uh, uh, Minister, Honorable Members, uh, DG. Uh, I saw in the list that uh, the chairperson of CIFA and the uh, the CEO of, of CIFA. Uh, I don't know if they are in yet. I see the DG is in. Uh, I would like to welcome ev everyone. Uh, we had uh, as part of our program, and we also indicated uh, when the minister presented the annual performance plan uh, um, sometime, I think last month, uh, if not early this month. Uh, yeah, sometime last month when uh, the minister was presenting the, the APP in, uh, for the department, um, we also indicated that as part of our program, we would like to have a briefing uh, on the uh, tourism uh, equity fund. Um, that was long before then the, there was this issue of the case. So even when we were informed that then there's a case pending, uh, we still felt that uh, we must still get uh, the presentation irrespective. Uh, uh, this uh, pre presentation then was scheduled for the 15th uh, of uh, June. Uh, today is the 15th of June. Um, so we decided to continue then with, with our meeting. Um, so uh, I understand that we have two presentations, uh, one from the Department of Tourism and also from uh, a small enterprise uh, finance agency. Um, yeah, I will then hand over to the, the minister as uh, the minister has already indicated honorable members uh, uh, by 11, uh, uh, she will be released to attend to uh, other duties uh, of, of the executive. Thank you very much, uh, honorable minister, uh, over to you. Thank you very much, Chaperson Hai. Thank you, honorable members, greetings. Um, indeed, the chair of CIFA, uh, Mr. Martin Mahosi, I saw is joined together with um, um, the DG and team from the Department of Tourism and the team from um, CIFA. 
we we do feel chair that is quite important for us to brief members about tourism equity fund and we thank you that you didn't change despite having a core challenge um, we still remain firm in terms of the implementation of the tourism equity fund and um, that's why we are defending the case in court and would have gone public about it um, just to indicate honorable members i think the dg will lead the presentation um, and the team together with ddg situado who's responsible for it um, from our side, uh, the need for Tourism Equity Fund is based on reports that we receive. And I think one of the things, Chair, that I pick up quite often in the public domain, even when we did interviews, was the confusion between the Equity Fund mm. and the Relief Fund. Yes. And we consistently have to remind the public that this is not a Relief Fund. Mm. We are Tourism Relief Fund, which has been implemented and concluded. This is one of the programs that we feel that um, needs to continue, has been in the pipeline for some time, is informed by the reports based, if you look at the tourism transformation, report 2015, 2018 continues to speak to this. Um, and also as the team presents, you'd see the need in terms of <clears throat> the response from the number of people who responded. It tells you in terms of the demand out there, because when we started as well, some people were saying, there are no people um, that are, are sort of, uh, you know, would have in, uh, interest. When I was sitting in BBC panel, for example, I got to hear about uh, ladies who are running a wine farm in the Eastern, in the Western Cape, who have applied, uh, I don't know if many of us know the Seven Sisters, who have applied uh, the tourism equity because they believe that they, they could be able to expand their business. And I'm saying this because sometimes there's a misinformation that goes out to sort of say, this is a program meant for those who are connected. This is a program meant for real entrepreneurs. That's why the partnership with CIFA, the partnership with our partner bank to assist in ensuring that we sift those that are real entrepreneurs who are willing to play a role in the sector and can be able to play a role. But also we are responding, this is in response to the challenge. Many of the black entrepreneurs and previously disadvantaged people in the communities in South Africa who have said, we have an interest. We have been, for example, we find somebody who's been a manager in a big hotel for years, saved a bit, has experience in running a hotel. Now things that they can go and run their own businesses. But because they don't have surety or money that can back them up, uh, even when they apply to the banks, they are not given the necessary support, financial support, despite them having run businesses and understood and have made where they are, which they are not owners, but workers, a success of that business. And now saying, I think I'm ready to be my own boss, run my own business with the experience, having run this and make sure that it becomes a success. And they do not find mechanisms anywhere to support them. And these are the people that we're looking for um, and ensuring that we can. The fund as it's presented, because sometimes it gives an impression as if we're looking for 100% black ownership. We're not looking for 100% black ownership. We're saying it's 51%. The presentation will get into that. Um, the other issue, Javulo, please mute. Um, the other matter that we are looking at as well, and that I want to flag as the minister, is, is the issue that, for example, as if we are saying to previously disadvantaged, previously advantaged people that we are now almost going to expropriate your properties. We are not saying that. There are many people who are running businesses. Some of them I've had a conversation with. They've written, we've got written, uh, um, you know, testimonies who say, I'm very old. I've got this baby of mine that I've looked after for many years, but I don't want it to end up in wrong hands. But the person that I've identified sometimes would be somebody that has been running my establishment. And I think this person deserves to grow and be an owner or something, but there's nothing to support them. And those are the type of people who are coming forth to say, we are willing to support government in terms of transformation. And I'm explaining this in detail so that the notion and the narrative that is in the public sometimes that misconstrue our efforts 
that mislabels us as racist is actually demystified because there is no basis of what all those distractors, including what Solidarity and Africa Forum says about us. It's not true. And that's why we say we'll defend our cause because we believe this is a just cause, as we said, even during the budget food. So Chair, that's my remarks. That's my reflection. I thought from a, being a political head, it's important to reflect this because as NC, we do believe that we have to build a non-racial society, but we've got to address and re redress the past. We can build a non-racial society on the back of others being left behind. It does not make our society sustainable. And that's where we are and would want to build this. And we are hoping both black and white, any race, any gender will support us, any age group will support this initiative because it's a good initiative. So I'd like to hand over to the team chair through you to start the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Minister. Uh, over to the team. Thank you, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson, and uh, <clears throat> good morning to yourself. Uh, thank you to the Minister, and good morning to the Minister, and good morning to all the Honorable Members, as well as to the colleagues. Um, <clears throat> Honorable Chairperson, um, uh, we will project just now, it's coming through. Thank you very much. Uh, let, thank you, thank you, Paul. We, we, we are going to, to, to speak a bit about access to finance, speak about the actual state of transformation, which is going to, to then put some figures uh, to, to, to what Minister has just highlighted about uh, the state of transformation in the sector. Uh, we will also draw from uh, the resolutions of the uh, Tourism Transformation Summit, which, which was held in 2017, uh, which by and large has actually uh, outrightly called for the establishment of this particular uh, scheme that we are actually presenting today. Uh, we will also draw some parallels with the Black Industrialist Scheme and why we have ended up with what we have got to date. Um, and then a bit of a rationale to, 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 the, to the fund itself. Um, and and uh, we, will, we will also deal with some of the objectives of this fund. Um, and and a uh, little bit of update, but most of the update, I would think uh, CIFA will be able to, to give that uh, uh, to, 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 the, to, the, to the members. If we look at uh, uh, some, some of the strategic documents that we are uh, busy implementing, uh, of course, from time to time, uh, we've got to adapt them uh, given the, the environment and so on. Uh, but the key thing to look at here is that uh, uh, the National Tourism Sector Strategy, um, uh, firstly 2011, subsequently reviewed in 2016, and we are currently implementing the 2016 to 2026. Um, and this is a document that is based on the Tourism Act. It actually makes very, very strong call for us to ensure that our, our, our efforts lead to inclusive and transformed tourism economy. Um, and, and, and amongst other things, then we should put in place uh, specific mechanisms that would actually assist us to, to be able to do that. Let's move. We do have uh, the, 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 the codes of good practice in terms of broad-based black economic empowerment that were uh, approved uh, uh, as way back as uh, uh, 2015. Um, and uh, that is what is actually being implemented. But we have got to be very clear and honest about it, that uh, the, the progress um, has really been uh, very, very, very uh, pedestrian. And, and uh, it, it is clear that uh, uh, if there aren't uh, extraordinary measures taken, uh, we, would, we would still be talking about pretty much the same uh, levels of, of transformation that we have got in the sector today. We have got uh, 
clear indications, let me put it that way, uh, from, from a number of uh, black entrepreneurs that would want to, so whenever this, uh, uh, different surveys around the state of transformation and so on are done, the feedback that comes through uh, indicates in the main that uh, access to finance, particularly for uh, black entrepreneurs uh, who would want to buy into the sector or who would want to start something anew, um, they, 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 they find it quite difficult to be able to actually access uh, 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 finance, whether it is for investment, whether it is uh, working capital, which which really is one of the biggest problems as well, uh, and and also uh, finance for for acquisitions. So, in the end, um, uh, just go back, just go back. One one. In the in the main, what they are saying is that uh, some of the feedback that they receive from from uh, finance institutions, whether they are DFIs or they are, they, are, they are commercial banks and so on, is, is issues around feasibility of their business plans and so on, which, which requires a dedicated support mechanism. And this is part of the reasons why we also run enterprise development programs. Uh, but there's also feedback that says limited experience in the sector, which would mean that you've got to be in there for too long to be able then to, to actually start uh, getting into the actual business, limited uh, equity contribution. And this is where the, the real crux of this thing is, uh, because most of the people may not necessarily have the equity, even if they've got the requisite experience, a viable business plan. Um, and and uh, there's a whole host of others that are actually given as reasons why they are not actually being given this uh, uh, fine finance. In terms of... Uh, the, 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 these questions as to uh, what about the tourism transformation fund? Would that not have been sufficient to deal with this? It had, it had fundamental limitations when it comes to meaningful participation. And meaningful participation, one aspect of it is actually the scale um, uh, of, 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 of the level of participation. So it's got a cap which is at 5 million, which means uh, the investments would, the projects would, would reasonably be smaller. Um, and, and the other bigger issue about it is that it could not allow for acquisition. Um, and it was also uh, not uh, done in a manner that would allow for, for, for a fully blended financing. And, and that, that was one of the critical parts that we, we really needed. It is important to reflect on the state of, uh, of, of uh, tourism uh, transformation over the years. Um, to use an example, uh, the target for, for large enterprises um, in, in, in 2012 was that uh, large enterprises must have 21% must have 21% ownership in the, in the, in the, each must actually have 21% black, black ownership. The results are such that only 23% of large enterprises were able to meet that particular target. Um, so, so the target is that 100% of large enterprises must have 21% ownership uh, 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 co composition, uh, and and that was actually uh, nowhere near uh, being achieved. And and we can read the same for 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 the other for the other categories in the in the in the in the same manner. But also uh, looking at the results for I will use large enterprise again. The target for management control by uh, uh, black people was uh, fifty percent. And that 50%, well, we were nowhere near that at all, uh, in that only 12%, only 12% were able to meet that particular target. Let's move. In terms of the same state of transformation report, but now uh, in, 20, in 2017, uh, at this point in time, we were no longer dealing with the 21%, we were now dealing with the 30% ownership after the codes were, were amended. And 
the, the, the picture is still pretty much the same, although there is even regression when you look at uh, large enterprises. Uh, using the same large enterprises, uh, you, you saw in 2012 large enterprises, um, at least 23% of them had met the 21% target. This time around, only 20% had met the 30% target in terms of ownership. And similarly, only 11% as opposed to 12% in 2012 had met the 50% target when it comes to uh, management control. And I'm emphasizing ownership, honorable chairperson, as well as the, the management control, because that's the crux of the, 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 the scheme that we are discussing here today. Let's move. Uh, this is in 2018. Um, the the green the green line graph just shows uh, the the targets, um, <clears throat> but in all categories, that is actually the performance of the sector. So across the board, clearly we 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 had not met any of these targets uh, with regards to uh, the, the the scorecards. Now, in 2017. The Transformation Summit uh, gave a couple of uh, clear recommendations that we are supposed to, to take into account. Um, it noted most importantly, uh, and, and with concern I must say, that only one in 10 tourism enterprises had black shareholding. It then recommended that the department must explore an equity fund to support majority black owned controlled enterprises in the tourism sector. It further said that the department should explore feasibility of a transformation fund. Now, not an equity fund. The equity fund has already been a, a recommendation of its own. A transformation fund using net profit after tax uh, and under, under the, 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 the enterprise and uh, supplier development element of uh, the, the, the codes. It further emphasized the need for uh, set aside, if one could put it like that, uh, when it comes to procurement uh, in relation to townships and rural areas, um, and, and, and also, 51% uh, uh, black owned uh, businesses. There has been some movement in terms of uh, SMMEs and so on with regards to the 30%, but not quite in the manner that it has actually uh, said in this, in, this, in this particular recommendation. And of course, a role that should also be played by the private sector in terms of uh, enterprise development to ensure that uh, we are able to grow uh, the number of participants within uh, this particular uh, band of uh, uh, large enterprises. The Black Industrialist Scheme, um, we approached the DTIC and we wanted uh, to, to get uh, accommodation, if I could put it that way. Um, and, and they looked at uh, our proposition and they, they also were happy that there is a need for this, but they indicated that, of course, there's is, is uh, heavy on the manufacturing side and, and being a, a service sector, we, we needed to, to, to actually administer our own, but they actually granted us uh, an approval to say that we should actually then proceed with this. Let's move. Now, the equity fund itself. The rationale which we applied here is that there's quite a limited number of medium-sized businesses owned and controlled by Black people in the tourism sector, um, let alone the large enterprises. The majority of tourism enterprises um, are far, far, far behind when it comes to meeting the 30% ownership target, um, let alone the 50% uh, management control target that, that, that was set. Uh, most black enterprises indicate that access to funding has been the main challenge for them to acquire equity. Um, and I've stated the most of the challenges as as as, as recording in progress. 
as reflected in the, the state of uh, tourism report, it's present transformation report. Um, and and so, sorry, sorry, let's just go back there. The one thing that 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 we, we need to highlight is that there's quite a lot of family owned businesses in this sector. Um, and 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 of course, uh, there's, there's those that uh, are not even interested in, in government business, so to say, which is the carrot behind uh, the, 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 the efforts to transform. So that, 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 that barrier was something that was actually uh, recognized. Um, and, and, and we have indicated uh, that uh, collaterals, Minister has also indicated this, uh, that collaterals um, become the biggest barrier because uh, you, you're mainly dealing with people that have got no background of asset ownership, whether at a family level or even just having uh, owned uh, businesses before that could actually serve as such collaterals uh, in the main. Uh, we can move. And we, we then saw the need to ensure that that, that, that gap is, is, actually, is actually closed. Now, we, from, from the point of view of um, how did we end up, for instance, with CIFA, we, we, one of the, the, the things that were clear was uh, from the DTIC was that we, we needed to work with the the, 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 the DFIs, uh, because they would allow for uh, additional resources to actually also come in because they would then provide their loans and so on, uh, which we understood because we've been doing this, for instance, with the NEF and so on, and, and some of the projects with IDC. So IDC was, was our first port of call. <clears throat> so we went there, we, we, we had lengthy discussions and so on, and, and we then subsequently also had discussions with CIFA. But on, on, on a comparative basis, the, the two things that, that really from the CIFA side we were much more interested in was that we were able to bring in uh, commercial banks as well to participate in the scheme, which allowed for a, a bigger pool of money, so to say, um, and 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 to be able to ensure that we are going to be able to to fund these transactions uh, in a in a in a much more properly blended manner. So so that's that's when we decided. Well, this is this is really a good a good a good deal, and we would rather go with this. But other element to it is the the, the aspect of non financial support. So we don't say, look, you don't qualify, go home there has got to be a way to ensure that uh, in the future there is readiness in terms of that business being able to actually uh, get into 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 the scheme um in terms of the the various uh, objectives um i would want to in the main highlight the fact that we would like to create participation at scale and and uh, we also want to make sure that uh, that participation is meaningful. It contributes to growth. Uh, it's contributing to investment because uh, it's not just a grant. Uh, there's, there's a significant portion of this money that is actually coming as a loan. And, and also the creation of employment ultimately is something that we would want to see out of this. And uh, we, we also uh, believe that uh, this would make some visible contribution to black ownership and control. Um, it would also make a visible contribution to uh, assets ownership and so on uh, at rural areas and in townships as well as in small towns. Uh, but there's, there's a direct uh, effort to ensure that the scheme empowers women and we speak about the 40% in that. Uh, the scheme uh, empowers youth, we speak about the 30% in that, uh, and it empowers people with disability when we speak about the 2% in that regard. Um, these are the details. Um, uh, it's a, it's a 1.2 billion rand uh, over a period of three years. Uh, but I think what I must emphasize is the fact that from the side of the department, the total amount that we're talking about is 180 times three, uh, which will be four, 508, uh, 540 million rands. 
which uh, would then uh, make provision for the grant component, but also a part of it would also go as 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 uh, I would call it a kind of soft loans, which 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 uh, would would be payable back into the fund, and it would replenish the fund so that uh, it could it could somewhat also sustain itself as it goes. Um, the, the 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 grant limit we ke- we have kept it at uh, uh, twenty million rands because most of these are uh, quite large projects as you would see in the next slide when we get there. And then the project value minimum must actually be 10 million rands. Um, let's move on. Thank you, Paul. Um, Minister has already spoken to uh, the case um, and, and the interdict that, 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 that uh, is currently in place and uh, and we await uh, uh, the court processes um, to, to, to then uh, get to the finality of this matter. It's important to highlight, and I think Sifa will speak a bit more about this, but it is very important to highlight that um, prior to that interdict, um, we, we, there, were, there were 379 applications reportedly from Sifa's side. And of these uh, total applications, uh, the, the total value of these projects was uh, 5.6 billion rands. Uh, now, 188 of those applications, uh, were, were which, which were valued at 4.1 billion, uh, had successfully passed through the screening phase already at that time. The appetite is huge. Um, there's huge demand for this money. Uh, by comparison, uh, even if we're just to take the 4.1 billion versus v the 1.2 billion over a period of three years, clearly there is huge, huge, huge demand. And, and it seems that there's also a lot of willingness to exchange, uh, for assets to exchange hands uh, in the interest of transformation. So that, that is a good thing that we are actually noticing uh, from 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 the participants in the scheme uh, and the response that uh, the public has given to the call from the minister to participate in this scheme in the interest of transformation. I'll stop at that. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, uh, DG. Um, can we check uh, the chair of uh, CIFA and the CEO? Let's start with the chairperson. Thank, th- thank you very much and good morning, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Minister. Um, we, we, we thank you very much for this opportunity. It is good to see you again. Um, we have asked our team to prepare um, a presentation similar to, to what uh, the, the department has done. Perhaps just to highlight, as the DG said, as the CEO is getting ready, uh, perhaps I should also indicate from my side is myself, as chairperson, the CEO, and the uh, and uh, Mr. Mr. Machamba and uh, Mr. Follows, who has lending in CIFA. So the, the relationship with the Department of Tourism <clears throat> has, in fact, panned out quite well. We started engaging late in the year, late in 2020 around December is probably one of the fastest uh, engagements we've had, we've had in terms of partnership with other parties. Uh, we had a meeting of the mind with them having given us a full background. Of course, we leveraged on the, the, the fact that we already had a network that we've been working with um, within the SME ecosystem, especially within the banking sector. So we had a quick turnaround time in terms of packaging the project and, and the, the, the program. Um, ex, perhaps it's also worth noting, as the CEO is getting ready, that this is not the first of partnerships with the other CIFA. We just uh, successfully uh, completed quite a sizable program with the Department of Trade and Industry, sizable within the shortest time, if, if, if one put it uh, relatively, on manufacturing, fully full uptake for the period of the past financial year. On that scheme, we also have uh, had the previous uh, partnerships with the Department of Agriculture. So there is capacity just to put you at ease, Chair, uh, to implement this program. Um, 
uh, notwithstanding the challenges, the core challenges that the department is still in, is still dealing with. But also to add is, as the minister uh, indicated, that we we we've also roped in the the partnership that we already have with CEDA to complement the process in case where the applicants would need to get some assistance, non-financial assistance in terms of preparation, post-preparation, I mean, post post subject with CEDA, we've already roped them in. They are part of, of, of this arrangement. It's just uh, taking along from the, the existing relationship that we have. And also the fact that between CEDA and CIFA, we have a vast network in terms of footprint that would enable those that need physical contact to reach either the offices of CIFA or CEDA for, for whatever assistance in as far as this program is concerned. Uh, for, for Of course, we, we, we will await the, the outcome of the court challenge, as the minister has said, uh, so that we can then roll out. I won't get into the detail there. Uh, Chair, it is just to set the tone. Let me hand over to Mr. Machamba, the CEO, to, to give the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, CEO, Mr. Machamba. Thank you, Chairperson. I hope my presentation is visible on your side. Yes, it is. It is visible. Uh, CEO. Thank you. Good morning, Chairperson, and uh, good morning to the Minister, the Honourable Members, the Chairperson of the Board, the DG, and, uh, and, uh, and colleagues. Uh, Chair, a, man, a number of issues that I'm going to speak to you, uh, the DG has covered briefly. I will not dwell too much on them except to say that uh, really the, the, the response to the, to the scheme was very, very positive from the economic citizens of the country, uh, judging by the numbers that CIFA got. But uh, let me start by giving the, 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 the background. Uh, my presentation is frozen, okay. Uh, Chair, that is uh, just the high level table of contents, which I won't dwell much, and I would like to zoom into the presentation itself, looking at the papers, the objectives, the focus and governance of the Tourism Equity Fund. As the DG uh, mentioned, Chairperson, the Tourism Equity Fund is an equity acquisition fund that is managed by CIFA on behalf of the Department of Tourism. And the intention really of the fund is to pilot the TF in partnership with our entity CIFA for a period of three years with a view to promote the participation of black enterprises within the, this tourism sector. Uh, the plan chair was to actually was to uh, uh, capitalize the fund as, as stated by the DG to the tune of 540, 540 million from the Department of Tourism over a period of three years, which is broken down into 180 million over the MTF period. This funding chair uh, intention is to utilize it as a capital injection of a grant contribution in funding uh, acquisitions and ex expansions uh, uh, to a maximum of 20 million per enterprise. The capital injection will be utilized to leverage at least 50% additional funding, uh, both from CIFA and the private sector. Uh, the, fund, uh, uh, the objective of the fund, Chair, is to really fund commercially viable and sustainable majority Black-owned enterprises uh, uh, within the tourism enterprises in rural, in the main and township areas. To, this, this really is intended to promote the alleviation of poverty, inequality, and growth of black controlled uh, 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 tourism enterprises. Also, we're looking at de-risking the funding provided to tourism enterprises through the, the, the patient capital that will ease uh, the debt repayment ability of these uh, black controlled uh, enterprises. We also intend to facilitate the participation of the targeted group, such as uh, women, youth, and, and youth in the priority sectors of tourism as defined by the, the triple B codes. The fund will focus in the majority on the what we call majority black owned enterprises, 51%. And also those enter enterprises must be black managed and they're black, black controlled. Uh, the sectors really that we were targeting are your accommodation, which is your hotels, your lodges, your resorts and self-catering units, your backpacker facilities, 
in the hospitality and related services, we're looking at your conferencing and convention venues that are attached in the main to a substantial accommodation element, uh, privately owned attractions in already developing, developed uh, tourism nodes, um, travel and related services, e.g. your tour operators, and also looking at any other tourism related product and initiatives not referred to above Chaperson that support tourism development imperatives and also economic impact in terms of job creation, geographic spread, and uh, strengthening the tourism offering of the Republic. The governance of the, of the tourism equity fund chair, the CIFA board the chair approved the investment guidelines of the tourism. Uh, is uh, somebody who's uh, interrupting the screen? It's, thank you. Um, the CIFA board will approve the investment guidelines of the tourism equity fund based on the agreed MOU between ourselves and the, and the Department of Tourism, and that was done. Uh, the tourism equity fund is designed uh, within the delegation of authority of CIFA. The CIFA board will also approve the cooptation of uh, the representatives from the Department of Tourism to the CIFA exco that approves these transactions, and that was done. The fund will follow CIFA approval processes and will require a specific delegation for CIFA exco to approve the maximum of 20 million grant and the applicable debt portion funded by CIFA. A dedicated portfolio management strategy will be applied to, ring, to, to the ring fence funds with regards to funding allocation, accounting, and reporting. CIFA will also report to the Department of Tourism on a quarterly basis on the performance of the fund, as well as consolidate the performance and outcomes of the fund within its annual financial statements and annual report. CIFA to hold quarterly meetings with the representatives of the Department of Tourism to discuss matters relating to the performance of the fund, including challenges that emerge as we implement the fund as will be actually uh, uh, updated by the applicants during the process of the applications. Financial and non-financial support of the fund. The financial support share will be provided on the following basis. Uh, I would like to remove this thing, Chair. It's just disrupting me. Just a minute. Thank you. To uh, the funding to acquire controlling equities in entities in the tourism sector. Also, it will be utilized for funding assets of existing entities in the sector for explicit purpose of setting up a new entity operating within the sector. We also provide support in asset finance and working capital that will be required in, in relation to the acquisition of the tourism entity for expansion and operational purposes. The fund will also finance a new developments and expansion projects as, it, as, as, as applicable and in relation to identified tourism subsectors. The total funding required will be split between the grant portion provided by the Department of Tourism and the loan portion provided by CIFA and also a, a leverage financing that will come from the commercial bank that we work with. The funding terms will be as follows, Chair. The grant capital injection will be up to a maximum of 20 million as determined by the scorecard of the fund. The CIFA loan portion will be actually applied as follows. CIFA will provide funding up to a maximum of 15 million as guided by its uh, thresholds. The term of the funding will be determined by the business ability to generate cash flows to service the loan up to a maximum of 120 million per enterprise. And also will provide a maximum moratorium or payment holiday of, of, of up to 20, of 12 months to allow these uh, entities to generate enough uh, revenues to sustain their operations to, during this period. And the pricing will be actually informed by the CIFA pricing metrics for the part of the, of the loan portion. Now, Chair, looking at the non-financial support, this is one of the critical elements, Chair, more, more especially for the startups that may need mentorship support and also to investees that require financial, technical, or business support based on the needs analysis of each applicant. Um, we'll also assist the, the players with market access in order to ensure that the entities are sustainable, they have market access, 
and will be actually that this will be facilitated with various industry players to ensure that these uh, entities are visible in the market. CIFA will also provide post investment monitoring support and also the department's technical committee uh, officials will also uh, provide with the what call the qualification requirements for each one of these entities. The qualifying criteria funding requirements and the application process chair. Um, somebody is interrupting the screen, okay. The fund will have the following qualifi qualifying criteria. The entity has to be registered in South Africa in terms of the Companies Act of 1973. Also the Close Corporations Act of 1984, the Cooperatives Act of 2005. It must be 100% South African owned. Uh, that is owned by South Africans. It, be, it must also be predominantly black owned, 51% at least. It must be registered and compliant with the South African Revenue Service as we're using taxpayers' money to finance these uh, transactions. Be majority black owner managed and controlled. And also that entity will have to be operating within the qualifying uh, sectors of tourism. The requirements for funding um, will require a business profile by the applicant, the, the triple B certificate or an, an affidavit, the company statutory document like your CIPC document, your, the FICA documents, certified copies of IDs of the directors or members of the entity, 12 months bank statements for those entities that are already operating, latest fund, annual financial statements, management accounts, that are not older than three months from the date of application. This now applies also to those entities that are already operational. Five year cash flow projections with clear assumptions where it's applicable, and also the relevant industry certification where applicable. If the entity has a facility, other funders will need statements for that facility. And then the process of applying Chepesin. All the qualifying applications will be submitted or actually were submitted to the CIFA email address tourism equity fund at cifa.org.za. The CIFA investment professionals review applications and conduct vetting, due diligence, and financial viability assessment for presentation to the approval committees of CIFA jointly with the, the tourism department officials. The approval committee will be CIFA exco as per the CIFA delegation of authority with two co-opted members of the department as stated earlier. Then the process of legal contracting and disbursements will follow. Once CIFA has processed the due diligence and established the viability, the proposal will be submitted also to the bank that we are co-funding the, 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 the entities with. This is just the, the flow of the application chair, which is a detailed flow from stage one to stage two to stage three, till we get to your post-investment monitoring and collection reporting of each entity. I won't bore you with this detail. The capitalization of the funding chair is indicated by the DG. Uh, the Department of Tourism will provide 405 million in the form of grant portion. And also the department will also provide 135 million, which will be used as a senior debt portion at concessional rates. CIFA will provide 120 million as part of the senior debt portion. That gives Chapesin a subtotal of ring fence funds of 660 million. The commercial bank, who is a co-founder, will come up with the 594 million, which is part of the senior debt, which gives us shares in the total size of the fund of 1.3 billion. Um, this is the, the split of the fund. The total is 1.3 billion. The anticipated average deal size shares in will be 40 million. Uh, we're targeting at least 31 enterprises. Uh, the, the, the cost per job at 250,000, anticipating 5,000 plus jobs. And 40% of these should go to black women owned entities and 30% to black youth ownership and 40% focusing on enterprises in peri-urban and rural areas. Chair, at the end of the the, the term or at the time of the interdict, 
um, when we closed accepting applications at CIFA, once the court ruled, we had 481 applications to the value of 8.3 billion. Out of these, 275 of these applicants went through the first round of initial screening to the value of 6.4 billion. The ones that did not go through the first round were up to the tune of 1.8 billion. And the average size per deal that we received as at that date was 23 million per deal. And uh, the minimum applications, as the GG said, is 10 million. And what we saw with the deals that went through, the highest and the maximum per deal was 184 million. Share that is the status of the of the tourism equity fund. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Machamba, and the uh, chair of uh, the CIFA, <clears throat> and also to the DG and the minister for the presentation on the TEF. Um, honorable members, can we then ask uh, questions uh, for clarity? Can I, we have hands? Yeah. Honorable Matevula first. The Honorable Moimank, Honorable Boshoff. Are there any other hands? Okay, for now, the, let's take the three hands. Uh, Honorable Matibula. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. And I would also like to welcome the presentation. Uh, my first question will be, we know it very well that uh, this sector is still dominated by white people. They own lodges, nature reserve, hotels, and b and b And they also own routes. So I would like to know whether the tourism equity fund is, is, is also going to assist uh, in terms of uh, boosting heritage tourism. Um, and also they said that they've received 379 application before they were stopped. So I wanted to know if they can give us the break, breakdown of each of those applicants per province so that we can know that in Limpopo there was how many people were uh, applied and then uh, whether they were uh, uh, women, old men, or people living with disability, so that we can have a clarity on what is going on in each and every province. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Matibola. Honorable uh, Mima. Uh, uh, let me also take this opportunity to, to welcome the, the, the two presentations. Uh, uh, with the with the uh, uh, opening remarks that was made by the minister uh, on the on, on on the first presentation uh, the, the 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 last slide last slide that talks to the court case against tourism equity uh, fund. The, 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 there's a bullet point that talks to both part A and part B of the application. Uh, it says that part of A, the court papers, says that the court to suspend implementation of the EF pending, the hearing of part B. Uh, <clears throat> so if, 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 if one could just uh, get a sense of the thrust of these two, two headers, part, B, part A and part B, uh, and if, if it is possible, Chair, uh, I think it will be interest that it will be of interest to to members of the select committee to to get the thrust uh, of, of of the of this court action. Uh, therefore, I would propose that maybe just uh, a summary of of this part A and part B, so that we are able to to digest and appreciate and comprehend the the. The, the, the crux the crux of of, of this uh, fight by 
by the uh, <clears throat> by, by the solidarity and the and, and the Afri Forum uh, uh, against the tourism equity fund. That is the first point. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> the 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 second the the second the, the second uh, point share relates to I think there's a slide that deals with uh, that deals with uh, I think it's the performance indicator, uh, the performance indicator of uh, this under CIFA. Let me just check that slide. Yeah, uh, the one that talks to the to, to the performance indicator there. Uh, there's a, a referral to things the <clears throat> the, uh, the 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 third one. Uh, I think the third one projects uh, that uh, the 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 third one projects enterprises. Are, yes, the one enterprises that that, that, that are identified there. Mm. I, I'm more interested uh, to get a sense in terms of uh, those third one enterprises. Uh, <clears throat> uh, what constitute them? Is it the enterprises that operate uh, fundamentally? In, Within the historical uh, 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 marginalized uh, communities, uh, is it, uh, the bulk of it does it uh, reside within rural and rural and, uh, and township areas? Uh, <clears throat> the reason I'm raising this point uh, it comes from. Uh, what we saw with, with land redistribution and land restitution process, where uh, the first phase, uh, a lot of uh, lot, 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 lot of investment was was spent on uh, on acquiring uh, this asset from the historically aged people. You see, and as a result, money resided mainly with them, without necessarily. Uh, spending too much money to sort of uh, uh, revitalize us or, or post the uh, land restoration programs. So what I'm what, what I'm what, what I'm much more interested in is to is to, to, to ensure that there is a circulation circulation of of, uh, of this capital within the historically disadvantaged communities, historically disadvantaged uh, tourism enterprises. Uh, while at the same time, uh, the issue of transformation is also being advanced. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the, the objectives that are outlined. Uh, focus on management, uh, uh, focus on, on enterprises, uh, fo focus on, on, on ownership. But I think what would be critical is to ensure that uh, is to ensure that uh, at the end of the at the end of the process. We are, we, we, are, we are faced with uh, uh, two sides of the same coin. Why, why we want to, to ensure that majority of the tourism enterprises are owned by the majority so that it is not owned by the artificial, artificial majority, but it becomes important that an opportunity of this, like as, as the present, presenters have indicated, most of the, most of the enterprises within uh, a township and rural and rural 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 rural, rural uh, areas will have those limitations uh, around uh, the ability to turn around around the ability to 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 to, to, to scale up the, the managerial uh, ability but i'm much more interested in ensuring that ultimately money goes to where it is supposed to go uh, that is the that is that that, that, that is the, the second this is the second point uh, the the, the, the last one uh, will probably just be a, a comment with regard to uh, uh, <clears throat> what happens what happens with the with the transformation equity fund I think this point consistently we raise it I'm more interested in uh, in getting a sense in terms of uh, in the meantime with this connection on part A and part B, uh, does it mean that uh, everything comes to a halt or not? Or there are other programs which necessarily uh, will not wait 
for the court action because the possibilities of this court action dragging for, for two to three years is enormous and as a result thereof it affects other targets of uh, of the department so i'm much more interested to get a, a satisfactory answer to say uh, programs are unfolding uh, while there is a, there is this element of, uh, of of court action on other programs that that is my point chair uh, <clears throat> The the uh, the issue of sustainability of the tourism equity fund I think is quite important. Which obviously, uh, it will be it will be important to get a sense in terms of uh, beyond 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 CIFA. Uh, what are the long term sustainability plan? Uh, uh, particularly taking into into account the need to also mobilize the private sector. Uh, the private sector to also be, 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 be on board. Uh, <clears throat> it will be interesting just to get a sense in terms of uh, uh, is there any is there is there any is there any uh, indication that the that the business South Africa has been engaged uh, or the baking sector has been engaged to sort of also uh, come on board. But other than that, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, the last one uh, is on the. Is on the uh, the point that was raised around uh, the representative of the tourism department of tourism on the exco of CIFA. Beyond that, is there any plan at the level of the board, the, at the level of the board? To, 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 to amend the trust deed so that there is an increase in terms of uh, 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 board members to be able to accommodate this new development uh, so that uh, 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 the Department of Tourism must not only find themselves uh, having representation at the level of EXCO, but at the level of board where decisions are taken, they have no voice. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Oh, no. Just before Honorable Bosov, perhaps I, my, my understanding of uh, the, the two processes, uh, part A and part B, I think uh, the team will uh, respond. Uh, part A is uh, interdicting uh, the, the whole process from going ahead, uh, Honorable Moimak. Uh, so there's nothing now that is happening, I, uh, I assume. And then part B will then deal with the substantive uh, issues uh, that are raised then by uh, uh, the applicants. Um, Honorable Boshoff. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair, and good morning to everybody. I take it the Minister has left because she said she had an 11 o'clock um, appointment. Um, in her introductory remarks, she spoke about that the TEF was based on um, reports that she had received. Um, is there a possibility that this committee could be given those reports so that we can also go through it to see what the basis was. Um, my second question is, um, let me just have a look here. Okay, um, in the first presentation, they spoke about 188 applicants, the applications that were approved to the value of 4.1 billion. Could we possibly be given the scope of the projects and whether follow up or investigations or inspections or monitoring has been done? And as Honorable Matavula said, could we be given an indication of where these um, projects have been instituted so that we can do inspections or oversight ourselves? Um, as well as the revitalization of the rural and township um, projects, where have they taken place so that we again can do oversight? I'm very worried that with regard to this equity fund that no people with disabilities have been identified. That's very sad because we need to show these people that we are also behind them. Then I would like to ask Mr. Manchaba to explain the de-risking in respect of debt repayment. Can he also give us an indication of who the um, commercial bank is that they've partnered with? And then I'm very worried about this 
monitorium of 12 months, 12 months on the um, repayment or the holiday of repayment that has been given. How will this fund grow if there is no repayments? And then could we also be given an indication of what the interest rate is on these loans if there is an interest rate? Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Boshoff. Uh, are there any other hands um, so that uh, we only have one round and then we get responses? Chairperson any other hands? Dango. Oh, you're sorry, Honorable Dango. Yeah, thank you very much, Chairperson. Chairperson, I've been covered by Honorable Mwemang uh, essentially in most of the questions. And the fact that this matter of uh, this equity fund is brought before the courts is now renders everything else academic. My other question was going to be, what is the rate of interest uh, and the margin of interest that is being charged? Is it being charged and is this a guarantee? And how much, what is the, the margin being charged by the bank in this instance? Um, but having said all of that, this case could take two, two to three years. Um, and the difficulty is that no development will take place from now until then. So um, we're sitting with an academic exercise, but I think we need to also make public that this is an equity fund and not a relief fund because people are getting very, very good views. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Are there any other hands? Uh, not. Um... No, thank you very much, uh, uh, Minister, uh, uh, DG, and uh, Chairperson of CIFA and the uh, CFO. I think the Minister clarified, uh, I'm glad that uh, she clarified the difference uh, between the relief fund, uh, the, trans the, the transformation fund, as well as uh, the tourism uh, equity fund, because uh, even in, in the media, I think there was a confusion uh, around uh, uh, these uh, three areas, particularly the TF and the relief fund. Um, uh, just what, what I want to check with uh, regard to what, what has been the, the, the role of uh, the tourism triple BE uh, charter council. Uh, the, the DG was giving us uh, the report uh, on the status of uh, transformation uh, the targets uh, with, with regard to ownership, uh, with regard to uh, uh, management, uh, skills development, uh, enterprise uh, and supplier uh, development. So he was giving us uh, those uh, targets that uh, particularly the two, uh, ownership and management, uh, that uh, uh, these were the results uh, of uh, 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 the department taking this decision uh, to establish the, the, the tourism equity fund because there was no progress in meeting uh, the, the targets uh, that were said that are also considered uh, uh, from time to time. Because my understanding is that enterprises annually uh, uh, are supposed to report uh, to the council uh, on, 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 the, on whether they've met uh, uh, these elements. Uh, or the targets. Uh, I just want to check what has been their role then with regard to the establishment of the TF, having uh, also made an analysis uh, in terms of the progress ar around the, those elements or, or the targets uh, that uh, you have mentioned, uh, 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 DG. Uh, I take that the minister also has now uh, left. I, I'm, I, I think I'll... Uh, Though we we we're not really looking at the at the case itself, uh, one would be interested really to know what are the basis uh, of, of the challenge uh, uh, on this particular issue. Um, whether is it the principle of uh, of the, the the affirmative action uh, itself, or is this a Operation, the, the challenge is operational, or is it about the principle? Because 
I don't know the, somebody was greeting. I don't know because I think the judge uh, call up in the when uh, even though I know there's a difference between relief fund uh, uh, and the, the the TEF, but the principle of affirmative affirmative action, uh, he he made it uh, uh, clear. Uh, 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 on the issue of uh, of the the the, the, the principle uh, on affirmative action, and therefore, if the challenge is on the policy itself, not on the operation of the fund, uh, well, I don't want to, to to judge the matter. But what I'm trying to say is that the issue of affirmative action has been clarified by the by uh, Judge Colapen uh, when he was considering the appeal. Uh, or on 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 this case on the on the relief uh, uh, fund, the the principle that was based on the triple B E in deciding on the allocation uh, of the of, of the assistance that on 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 the relief fund, yeah. So basically, for me, I think those are the 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 issues. Um, but also, perhaps the the last point will be those that have already applied uh, is it a combination of those who are owning 51 uh, percent black and the, and the also maybe 49 or even down the line uh, those that have applied in, in terms of the race is it a combination or is it just black only uh, no say 49 percent whites and so forth and so forth if you can clarify that aspect as well uh, so that uh, it's not viewed just as, even though it's 51 percent black but you end up having 100 percent black people that are uh, applying whether the the component of uh, 49 percent say uh, white uh, and for example is it also accommodated in those that have applied uh, uh, back to you uh, dg in the absence of the minister Thank you, Honorable Chairperson, and thanks to the Honorable Members for all those questions. I would want to request that CIFA starts, uh, because there's a lot of technical detail that they would be able to, to provide in this regard, and then we will come after them. Thank you very much, uh, over the Chairperson. Okay. Mr. Martin. Oh. Chair, uh, uh, yeah, Honorable Haidt, no, sorry, it, it, this thing, technology sometimes uh, messes up with us, so it takes yeah. time to press the right buttons. I'm sorry for that. Chair, no chair we, we'll be very measured. You, uh, if the Honorable Committee could please uh, bear with us, noting the fact that uh, the, the matter is still in court, so we may not be able to, to divulge all details. We'll try as much as we can. To be circumspect so that we don't, uh, 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 you know, affect the I mean, impact on the merits of the case as we proceed. So the the one thing that uh, the honourable uh, Matiwula raised was around the heritage, heritage tourism. Perhaps we should just clarify once more. The fund is meant to assist people to acquire equity in existing enterprises for them to expand on existing enterprises. For them to um, to 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 initiate greenfield projects, so basically uh, projects from scratch. My I, I, my camera is not so stable. My apology for 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 moving it around so much. So so the the what we have done. Uh, so so the the people who are in heritage tourism would definitely uh, be counted amongst those that we can consider uh, for 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 funding. There's no exemption. Of such because they fall within the same. So maybe just for clarity again, I think uh, I picked up, of course, as the honourable members raised questions, that indeed the the amount of information will not be enough out there to the public. So so as I said, it's going to be acquisitions, it's going to be expansions, it's going to be uh, people that are uh, dealing with startups, it's people that are in tour who are in tour to, to tourism, who are tourism operators linked to, to establishments, it's uh, restaurants that are linked to accommodation facilities. So so those are the areas. So just to clarify once more, I and mean, maybe let me jump, still continue on that on that uh, matter of of, uh, of coverage and information sharing. 
I agree with Honorable Dango and, and others that have raised the, the matter. We, we, as a board of CIFA, are, are seriously, continuously concerned about the extent to which we're able to, to communicate our message out there. Of course, we are communicating a lot of programs. The, the tourism program was packaged as part, is packaged as part of our, of our communication incentives, uh, initiatives rather. In the past uh, two months, we appointed a communications company that is helping us to, to roll out our communication campaign and would want to give this one a specific focus. We had started to prepare for that until such time that we were interdicted. So that's just one part. Uh, suffice to say that we had also been using our our normal network within the ecosystem to spread as much as we can, working with also also the provincial departments of uh, those that are responsible for tourism as part of their mandate to help us in, in spreading that message. So one other one, my man raised the question about private sector involvement. Indeed, private sector is involved. The the partner bank that we brought in is APSA Bank. Those are the, the that's the bank that 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 we concluded the agreement with. Um, there was appetite from other banks, but for this kind of program, we, we actually launched them ordinarily with a particular bank where you agree on certain terms for you to be able to, to roll it out on. Uh, the the role of the board in as far as the 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 the, the program is concerned, we, we have a standing delegation of authority metrics within CIFA, where uh, EXCO plays a significant role as well as processes with the applications for funding are concerned. Ordinarily, all applications, there are certain delegations that we've devolved down. And we also have a subcommittee of the board that we call a court credit and, and investment committee that takes uh, applications above a particular threshold. But in this particular instance, for the tourism fund, we made a special provision for EXCO and the committee that was referred to uh, in the presentation to approve up to a level of 40 million rand. So an application that is above 40 million rand would then be referred to the CIC. Uh, the CIC will process and uh, above, above a particular threshold, they would then uh, recommend for the board for the board to approve. We are trying to, to stay within the provisions of what has been given as a directive that SOE boards must try and stay away as much as possible from interfering with operations and therefore devolve the responsibilities appropriately to the lower structures. That's why we do that. Honorable Boshov raised the issue about the 1.1 billion approved. Again, it's a matter of, uh, of miscommunication. What we are talking about is screening. Uh, we're not talking about approval. So in essence, the, there would be certain basic, uh, pre, call it pre-qualification requirements, if you, want to, if you want to put it that way that when people submit, those applications will be screened for further uh, processing, which means that uh, a certain number of so these ones can go ahead to the next stage. And that stage means uh, those that uh, do deal writing would go and do proper due diligence on these enterprises, come back with a deal that is probably re properly written for presentation to the relevant structure, be it the expo structure uh, or to the upper level through the escrow structure to, to CIC uh, for, for it to be processed. The issue relating to, to de-risking, uh, Mr. Machamba will talk to you. Perhaps it's important again, just revisit the, the, the model of this program. So this program is a partnership between three partners, if you want to call it, or call it, yeah, call it three partners. Is the funds that are, that are committed by the Department of, of, of Tourism, and is the funds that are committed by Assess CIFA, and is the funds that are committed by the partner bank. And the structure of the, of the program is such that uh, we, as I mean, the, the department has made a commitment uh, that uh, in order to make, and, and that's where we talk de risking, is to, is to make it sustainable, basically, to incentivize the program, uh, we can offer grants up to a particular threshold. So if we say, for instance, a grant is going to be up to the level of 20 million. It doesn't mean that every applicant who comes in is going to get a grant first of all. And secondly, it doesn't mean that if an applicant comes in an application of 20 million, they'll be given 20 million as a grant. There will be a scale of assessment which says uh, this deal compared to that deal warrants that we, we, we make it a bit softer by providing a grant. Perhaps, it's, for instance, it, it gives us a better yield in terms of employment. It gives us a better penetration in terms of, of uh, uh, building the tourism uh, uh, ecosystem within a particular region. There'll be a number of issues. I'm just giving an example. That would warrant uh, a grant to be seen as being more attractive to be given a slightly better grant. I mean, an application being given a slightly better grant compared to the other. 
that that's but then the other part of, of the of the of the of the program is where we step in as CIFA. We would then say uh, beyond over and above the grant that is granted, the team would then say, we believe that for this deal to be sustainable, it needs a leg up. And that leg up would mean that we give it concessionary rate. And we say concessionary rate in our case would be up to a, a limit of 15 million as a concessionary rate. So, so in that case, we would say, uh, if for instance, we were charging, I'm just giving an example, 18%, we then say for each to be feasible, let's rather charge it perhaps at 12%. It doesn't mean that the state is losing. It doesn't mean that the program becomes unsustainable. It simply means that you, you're trying to strike a balance. Remember, part of what we do as CIFA and state is to make sure that we come in to, to, to deal with uh, market failures, to make these things much more attractive. Like the minister said, the difficulties and hurdles of people raising money for tourism are quite uh, 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 huge, so we should never undermine it. So, so that is the reason why we do that. Then the bank comes in at commercial rate. So basically any deal will be, will look, look at it as a pie that is cut in three ways in terms of the funding structure. Uh, management can, then from the CEO side, they can, they can try and elaborate that, uh, if, if uh, there's a need uh, to, to do so, Chair. So, so, so broadly, the, 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 even the role of the banks, we have not entrusted, I think there are two things that is quite attractive about this scheme. There are two things. One that says, as a state, uh, as partners uh, who are part of the state missionary, we went out to leverage on, on private sector funding and were able to raise quite a substantial amount of money. That was enabled, that, that, that's what enabled us to raise the 1.2 billion in threshold. Secondly, it also takes away the doubt that people may have that this can be subject to manipulation, as the, as the, as the minister said, because there's an initial approval that is done within government or within CIFA, within the state rather, or within the CIFA machinery together with the department, uh, where once a deal has been approved, it's still sent further to the commercial bank for the commercial bank to finish the last leg of, of the DD. And, and, and then approve within the, 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 the scope as the structure of the deal allows them to do so. But again, our, on, our, our part is, on our part as the state, we have not given banks absolute power that, that they can override whatever that we do. Uh, if there are in certain instances where we feel that the banks are unfairly uh, rejecting the application, we can step in and say we don't agree with you on this on this instance. So I think it's a very creative and innovative model that we're trying to experiment that allows us to to uh, open up advantages for people at the same time, making sure that the risk is not too high to make the 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 the, the, the program itself unsustainable. So Honorable Boshoff, we have not approved anybody. We have pre-screened uh, uh, so that the people can be taken from the next stage. Unfortunately, we've not been able to take to the next stage because we're interdicted at that stage. So we had to stall. So, so Honorable Chair, I, I would, I would plead with the committee that please, we, 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 there be an understanding that we may not necessarily give the full detail of the breakdown that, uh, that uh, the, the, the Honorable Committee is requesting, except to give you the high level numbers that have been alluded to. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe the, the, the CEO can, can just step in to cover if there's any question that I missed. Thank you. Maybe you can uh, also deal with this one of... Uh, yeah, you yeah, muted, sure. No. Oh, sorry. No, he's not muted. I heard him perfectly. Oh. <laughs> no, no. Can you hear me? Oh, no, I yes, was saying... Yeah, okay. Maybe I don't know if I'm the only one. I, I can't hear you. I don't know if I'm the only one that can hear I don't know if others can hear you. So you we still can, can't hear me? Can. No, we can hear you, Chair. Oh, okay. Maybe then uh, Mr. Machamba can uh, respond to it if uh, the chair cannot hear me. There, there's a question on, on the chat uh, from uh, Honorable Boshoff, if uh, uh, he can also deal with it. But also there's a slide uh, that talks to the criteria. Uh, uh, I don't know if uh, maybe Honorable uh, Boshoff wants more than what is contained in that slide uh, on the criteria. If you look at the C CIFA presentation, there's a section that deals with the criteria. Uh, but then if you, you need more, uh, Honorable Boshoff, uh, uh, perhaps you can uh, uh, elaborate. Um, 
Um, Mr. Machamba, can you then respond to some of the questions that uh, the chairperson of CIFA has referred to you, but also include the, the, the one that is on the chat? Thank you, Chair. I, I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are audible, yes. Thank you, Chairperson. Let me start with the, 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 the question from Honorable Boshoff. As I indicated, Chair, in my presentation, the screening is based on that funding criteria. For example, we say the company must be South African owned. It must be, the deal must be more than 10 million. And um, the, 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 the business enterprise must be based either in peri urban or rural areas. And that is the initial screening process. And then these companies that went through the first round of screening, they met that, that basic initial screening process. And as the chair indicated, it's not an approval, it's screening, because the next step now is to do the detailed due diligence to see, for example, if the business is viable and also meet all the other funding criteria of CIFA, the department, and, and the commercial banks. So the, 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 that, that issue of, 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 of approval, uh, really, we, we were not yet there, Chairperson, when the interdict came about. We're still busy doing or dealing with the screening exercise. As I said, when we stopped and closed shop after the court ruled, we were sitting with 481 applications to the value of 8.2 billion. We screened them on the first round, then they were reduced to 275 applicants to the value of 6.4 billion, of which the first ones that were unsuccessful on the screening, not approval, just screening to meeting the basic criteria were up to the value of 1.8 billion. Um, as the chair indicated, we, we, we chair, there, 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 there's, um, there, these other limitations that some detail we, we, we may not be able to give because of the matter being subject to care. But on the issue of de-risking chairperson, the chair of the board, did indicate it because what we do, the grant portion actually that we get from the department for each deal, it reduces the gearing of the, of the, of the transaction so that the entity is not burdened with a huge debt. And then also because of the, of the, the limitations, actually the, the reduction in the gearing because of the grant portion, the bank itself, that is now even the commercial banks, will be then forced to look at concessionary what call a, a rates that will charge for these entities that will be working with them. That is absent. Because as government, we would have de-risked and reduced the gearing of the transaction through the grant that we provide as government. Um, the issue chair of the 12 months payment holiday, it's not a, a, a principle of pass one, pass all. We look at each deal and we analyze the cash flow generation capacity of this deal. And we say, this deal will probably be able to break even, say by month number six, then we give them that payment holiday for six months. If a particular one needs eight months or 12 months, then we apply that principle. So the payment holiday is uh, actually granted on the merits of each deal that we look at based on the cash flow generation capacity of the deal, because you don't want to strangle the, the, the cash flows of the entity by making these high payments right at the start of its operations. So basically that payment holiday, we, we provide it not in perpetuity, but on the, on the, based on the profile of the deal that we are assessing. Um, 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 Chair, without giving too much, the majority of the applicants were, were, were predominantly black. Because remember, the criteria says uh, the entities must be 50 plus one percent black owned, um, and, and then there were those that were below your 50 uh, plus one percent, but they were a minority, and they, we don't exclude them because they, 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 by law we couldn't. But you lose certain points based on the level of ownership uh, 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 of the company with regards to being majority previously disadvantaged owned or previously advantaged owned. So Chair, that, that is, is, is the case. I'm not sure whether 
there are any other questions that are missed, but the chairperson of my board has covered the majority of them. So thank you. But if there are any, we, we we're willing to, to provide more detail chair with the limitations of the, the subject game matter uh, that we're dealing with. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe some uh, uh, the DJ will respond to them. Uh, okay, Chair. You yeah, just a back. slight addition, Chair. Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry to budge in. I, I thought it is important that that I also uh, amplify the 12 month issue. The reason why we consider the 12 month uh, uh, holiday was at that stage, remember when the, this program was being launched, that was when we were in the midst and we are still in the midst of, of, of the COVID uh, 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 pandemic. So the understanding was that the tourism market is, is seriously impacted by, by the COVID uh, 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 pandemic. Therefore, we needed to, to be considerate of that. So and our understanding was that if we provide for a 12-month holiday, we would then enable these enterprises to at least uh, be able to, to, to uptake this, this facility without too much adverse impact from, from what factors that they can control. But also the emphasis was for us to, to focus primarily on mainly promoting domestic tourism uh, with the understanding that at that time, as you, 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 you recall, Chair, the, even the air traffic had not uh, 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 been restored to the level that it is. One cannot even say the stage, perhaps the traffic is that much in terms of overseas visitors. So that, is what, that was our main understanding, the motive behind the, the 12 month uh, 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 payment holiday. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. I just want to persuade uh, uh, Honorable Matevula with regard with regard to the, the, the issue of the states uh, per province and uh, also the categories uh, like women, uh, people with disabilities, youth, um, that uh, perhaps once uh, this uh, process is over, uh, the, the court case and all that, and also the, uh, uh, the department and the CIFA have processed uh, the, the application and the application have been approved. Uh, that uh, will then at a later stage then uh, get the, the detailed uh, report on those areas as well. Because if you, you remember, the, the TEF is now uh, part uh, of uh, the, the department's uh, the annual uh, performance plan. Uh, so from time, from time to time, the, the department uh, will be reporting uh, to, to the committee. Uh, on on the status, uh, if you remember, it is it falls under program four uh, of the department, which is a tourism sector support services. Um, so we, when we invite the, the department, then we'll get uh, details on on that program four, uh, particularly uh, on the TF. Uh, for now, because uh, uh, the, 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 it's still at the early stage. Uh, we might not get all the details, but we will definitely get all the details that you require in terms of uh, uh, the provincial spread and also the categories in terms of youth, uh, women, uh, people with uh, disabilities. Uh, I will uh, hand over now back to the department. I've noted the uh, honorable uh, 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 team. Uh, you'll come after the department has uh, responded to the initial question, then I'll give you a chance uh, thereafter. Uh, DG? Perhaps, DJ, if you can also clarify the issue that was raised by uh, Honorable Moimang on the issue of the Part A and Part B as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Let me ask uh, the DDG to, to come in first, and then I will, I will come back to this issue as well uh, when, when we, we, we deal with the rest. Um, DDG Sitwama? Good morning, uh, uh, Chairperson. Uh, good morning, members. Uh, good morning to the Chairperson of um, the Board of CIFA and the DG and, and other, other, other colleagues. In terms of the court case, I think the Chair has articulated it um, a very eloquently in terms of where, where we are and how uh, the two parts, that is part a and part B relate um, uh, 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 to, to, to one another. Without um, uh, going too much into uh, the merits of the case, I think it will be sufficient to state that um, uh, the, the, the court order is an interim uh, suspension 
um, if, if, if we may say that the case is still a, a, a proceeding where we are now. Um, the suspension was also to um, um, uh, not to uh, implement TEF when there could be issues that um, the applicants have been raising, particularly with regards to the constitutionality of the decision to um, uh, 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 increase um, uh, um, uh, the back ownership uh, targets from um, uh, 32 to 51 percent. So the issues there are really constitutional in terms of the rationality of, 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 of the decision. Uh, but so far, we have been able to file the records as um, uh, uh, ordered by the interim uh, uh, court order. Um, uh, we are at the stage where we are preparing further court um, uh, papers so that the court could be able to um, reach a, a decision. Very interesting, uh, Chairperson, what you have raised with regards to uh, uh, Judge Colapen's um, uh, decision in terms of the TRF. Um, this time around, um, um, uh, when in the TRF, the, 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 the contestation was really that triple uh, BEE should not apply in the TRF because a TRF is related to disaster management. But now the attitude is that um, 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 uh, 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 um, there is no rationale to apply triple BEE for the for 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 for. for for, for the TEF. Um, I've alluded a little bit in terms of where we are uh, with the process and really we it's, 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 a, it's a little bit of a setback. We must admit uh, that um, uh, after all the efforts that we have um, uh, made with, with CIFA to get the, the, the TEF up and running, uh, we are now slept with a a, 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 a court order, a question by Honorable Mimang in terms of um, whether there are other um, uh, funds uh, 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 in the interim while the, the, the TEF is suspended. Um, we do have the TTF, uh, but it is not, um, it is not addressing the, 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 the results that we will want to address with the TEF. Um, uh, the TEF, uh, is, is meant for large enterprises and it meant it is meant to increase black ownership uh, participation uh, black black ownership targets uh, 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 as, as, as mandated in terms of the WBEE legislation um, there is a gazette um, that um, was um, was published in, uh, after after the the, 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 the the launch of the TEF, it has got a, a, a case, um, if I may call it a business case, or the rationale why TEF um, will 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 seek to um, uh, uh, set the, the the black ownership targets at at fifty one uh, percent. Um, the the role of the triple BEE uh, council um, uh, TEF really is 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 is, is um, Reckoning and bringing to 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 to, to par some of the um, recommendations uh, that were made by the summit, as uh, the the, 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 the DG's uh, presentation had alluded to, um, uh, uh, the the mandate of the triple B E E as as it was being unrolled has really um, uh, given insight in terms of where we are with regards to transformation. Thank you, TG. I'll take it back to you. Thank you very much, uh, DG. Honorable uh, Chairperson, I will, I, will, I will touch a little bit again on the issue of the role of the, the council. The council's role is to monitor the state of transformation in the sector and they do that through uh, surveys and so on. Once they have been able to conclude um, that state of transformation report, they then make uh, recommendations to, to the minister. So that's, that's their role in terms of the law. And, and they would use several tools to be able to get to this, amongst which the 2017 Transformation Summit that I've spoken about, they convened that. Uh, to make sure that there's a dialogue about these issues and uh, specific recommendations that then can go to, to the minister. So, so 
in the end, their biggest role here will be to monitor whether this which we have put in place upon implementation, is it leading to the results that were uh, deemed to be, to, be, to be what should be achieved from an instrument of this nature. So, so, so they, they would not play an active role, let me say, in the, in the running of, of, of the, the activities and so on, but they will always be that, that, that eye that is looking at whether things are done correctly, be it from government or be it from, 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 from the side of private sector. Hence, they, they are an independent uh, authority in this regard. The other thing that uh, I do think that uh, uh, most, most of the, the, the matters have been covered, uh, but I would, I would want to, to just give a, a bit of uh, assurance to Honorable Matebula that uh, we, we do have within our Working for Tourism program uh, uh, projects that focus on, on heritage tourism. Um, you would have noted when we were doing the tabling of the, the plans that some of the projects that we were talking about uh, were actually of that nature uh, in support of uh, some of the experiences, whether, whether it is work that we do uh, with, with uh, uh, collaboration with arts and culture and so on. But, but of course, uh, resources are limited. Um, and, and as honorable members would know, uh, we, we did have a, a, a significant uh, cut in terms of the, the working for tourism budget. So uh, the extent to which we can actually get into that, uh, it's also a little bit hampered. But overall, that also now forms part of what we would like to see out there with regards to our own proposition from 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 a point of view of what product is it that, that we are marketing uh, out there. The, 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 the aspect, this one aspect, which, which I think would be, uh, is two actually, uh, whether from a sustainability point of view in terms of this fund, uh, are there any engagements taking place? At the moment, no. Uh, are we thinking about such? Yes, we are, but we are we are hamstrung because of uh, the case, and we don't want to do anything uh, related to this area of work until this matter has actually been resolved. But there are there are there are ideas in terms of how we can we can work together, whether it's philanthropic uh, uh, philanthropic uh, uh, financing or whether it is uh, all all forms of other financing. That, that could uh, assist in terms of uh, beyond, beyond these current three years that we have got uh, with regards to the fund. The last issue I would want to highlight, um, the, the reports, uh, most of these reports that, that we have spoken to, um, they, have, they have been uh, presented previously in parliament by the, 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 the by the the, the, the the BEE council. So, so it's, it's uh, the, uh, the, 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 the committee chairperson would be uh, able to benefit a, a lot more in terms of the nuanced details. If they were to a request that uh, the council should come and give them presentations of the various state of tourism report, they would do that with a whole lot more detail than what we have been able to share within this short space of time. So, so those, those exist, the reports are there. Um, and, and indeed, these are reports that are telling a consistent picture. Uh, and that picture says that there is a need for us to be able to ensure that this inclusivity in the South African economy within the space of tourism. I will stop at that, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much, DG. <coughs> uh, uh, um, honorable members, I'll, let's do this. Uh, allow honorable uh, team uh, uh, to ask a question, but also I'll allow members uh, if uh, they have a follow-up uh, question to to raise. Uh, if I can have uh, hands, uh, le le let's first have hands before we allow uh, honorable team uh, for follow-up questions. But if not, then I will allow the uh, honorable team to go ahead. Uh, no. Okay, Honorable Tim, I think you are the only person. Over to you. Thank you, Chairperson. I appreciate the opportunity. Chairperson, I won't be long. I know we have another meeting after this. 
Um, okay. <clears throat> Chairperson, it just really simply comes down to a very simple question um, premised by the following. All tourism ventures at the end of the day, chairperson, are businesses, okay? So any business, when you start it, you have to have a fair, you know, I remember when I was studying um, studying business, uh, uh, mercantile law, uh, our, our lecturer told us, what is the primary, primary um, purpose of a business? And that is to make a profit, okay? Otherwise, you're just, you know, going nowhere and trying to swim up a street and just not moving. And sometimes you move backwards. Um, so the question I want to ask the department is nothing to do with the court case. <laughs> um, is what level of engagement are they having with private investors to marry them with, with tourism to prospective tourism entrepreneurs and existing entrepreneurs that are trying to get ahead? And specifically... What I didn't hear or didn't see in the presentation or didn't hear today was the digital space, the digital financing space. Now, this is a space that a lot of people are not aware of, but there are a number of companies now that are offering <clears throat> financing on, on a digital platform. And that digital platform basically means that they're able to, these companies are able to take away all the, the physical analog infrastructure that exists in, in the banking sphere. Banks spend over a billion rand every year on things like paperwork, manual transactions, staff in massive banking offices to process transactions. And they basically place all these transactions in the traditional banking sphere onto a digital space. So therefore, they take away all those costs that we see on our bank accounts every month and then their model is, and there are a number of these companies, their model is, is that they don't charge interest. It's actually Sharia law compliant. They don't charge interest on the loans that they give to businesses. What they do is they take specific interest in the business, number one, to make sure that it's viable. In other words, that it will make a profit. And then will lend the money on that basis and then will charge a small percentage, normally about three to 5% of the turnover of the business. That is how they get their money back. But obviously, they will get involved in businesses that they know are viable because it makes no sense to lend, <clears throat> to invest money in a business that's not going to make profit. So the point is, I just want to know what, what level of engagement is the department in working on in terms of digital platform um, in financing and linking entrepreneurs with investors rather than the state being the, the sole provider of grants. And as you know, Chair, that money will run out somewhere along the line. You know, businesses have to be self-sustainable. And uh, you will remember that I raised this with the Minister of Small Business Development in the speeches, I think it was last week, and she was uh, quite amenable to the idea. So um, I'm once again trying to be progressive and saying, you know, can we not look at exploring that that space? Because I think that would be of great help to tourism entrepreneurs across across the board in South Africa. And, and the, the the minister went to great lengths to say that this is not a racist endeavor. They want to help all South Africans to be empowered. And I come to it with that with that starting point. So if the if the if the department can just respond as to where they are and whether they would like to have further engagement with companies like that to see what the possibilities are, what the options are out there to, to pass on to, to entrepreneurs in, in the space. Thank you, Jim. Uh, thank you very much uh, on our routine. Uh, uh, perhaps just to, uh, before I allow the department to respond, I, the, I like the, the, your entry point uh, about the, uh, what your lecturer said uh, to you. I think the reason now we're discussing the, the TEF is basically the reason uh, the, the reason why we're discussing it is because uh, there were those that uh, did not uh, allow other people to, to be involved in business, let alone making profit, just to be involved in business. Uh, so this TEF then is addressing that legacy uh, of others, not allowing others to be involved in business. Otherwise, we will not be talking a TF. 
if everybody uh, was allowed to be in business and make profit uh, in business. Um, back to you, DG and uh, C Sifa. Perhaps I should ask Sifa to, to come in first, uh, Chairperson. Thank you very much for also, uh, in part, uh, giving context to the, to the question. Thank okay. Yeah, Jeff, from, from our side, we, we, we take this to be an input for, for guidance. So that there's not much input. We've noted that, and we've noted, of course, uh, what, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Honorable Broadtesh uh, has uh, indicated uh, in terms of the, the, what we could improvise to save costs for, for entrepreneurs. For us, all, all of them are entrepreneurs. Uh, so we're being, we're talking about tourism now. It could be something that we could explore as engaged to the, the, the Minister of, of Small Business, who is the minister that we're responsible to, uh, as proposed by Gadona Rabunema. Thank you, Sha. Thank you very much. Anything else, uh, Digi? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. I, I don't want to... Uh, even begin to suggest that we are having any discussion whatsoever with uh, the, the the these types of platforms that might be providing alternative, uh, innovative type of financing and so on, uh, because we are not uh, as as we speak. Um, our our departure point, honourable chairperson, was um, in this particular instance. Uh, something more accessible, less sophisticated as well. Um, we do run a separate program altogether that, that assists with packaging opportunities that would attract international investors, uh, domestic investors into specific tourism initiatives with uh, entrepreneurs that are ready to actually go in that particular kind of route. Which, 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 which is a whole separate one. And from time to time, we do host uh, different, different uh, investors from uh, different parts of the world, whether it's the Nordics, whether it's your Gulf region and so on, so that they are able to come and see what is actually available, which they could actually then get into. But we do understand that multiplicity of initiatives would probably yield uh, much greater results, if one could put it in that particular way, um, and 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 hence we have we have got different types of instruments to be able to to look into this, and and we would would our doors are open if there are those that would want to knock at the door of the department and say, uh, this is what we provide um, without punting a particular scheme um, uh, or or a, a particular uh, approach we would then be able to provide them the same platform to say, you got projects, these are people that are providing these types of finances and so on. Uh, we are mindful also that uh, there are now discussions, Honorable Chairperson, in the past two weeks or so, you probably picked up that uh, there were now discussions from SARS point of view uh, on, on, on how to also bring on board some of these platforms, and, and I think the, the biggest one that was being uh, discussed was Bitcoin. And, and they were saying, it, it's it, much as it's, it's not necessarily a, a legal tender, so to say, uh, in, the, in the context of South African uh, 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 economy, but they, they recognize that there's a lot of what is exchanging hands and so on. But that, that environment is not necessarily regulated as yet. So we'll also look at that development and see where, where that development is going. But our door is, is open. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. Uh, keep on muting myself. Honorable uh, Tim. Yeah, Jefferson, I don't want to belabor the point, but I just want to make it clear to our colleagues, Mr. Tarake, that we, we're not talking about Bitcoin here. We're talking about banking systems. As the banking systems that you and I understand, we all have bank accounts. I think we all received our salaries today. We're talking about that same bank account. We're not talking about Bitcoin and electronic currency. We're talking about cheaper banking systems, which are digital. So therefore, there is no, there's, there's no, uh, 
there's no huge um, people element behind it that costs money. That's what we're talking about. And I'm only raising this because I've been, over the past six months, approached by a lot of companies that are coming up with these new innovative ways of doing it, and they want to help South Africans, um, especially emerging entrepreneurs, especially in the tourism sector, have a platform where those costs are greatly reduced and removed so that the path to profit, as you say, Che, we have a, we have a big job to remove the legacy of apartheid, and we want to do that. Because the bottom line, Che, is, is more South Africans that are economically productive, the more tax we can get in, which means the bit we can run the country better. And it's really about that. So, Che, per perhaps somewhere along the line in one of our oversight visits or something like that, I can, I can maybe help the committee by doing a presentation on this kind of thing so the committee has a better understanding of what I'm talking about. And then we can we can discuss it with departments and that sort of thing. But maybe a, a, a learning a learning opportunity for all of us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Tim. Um, at this stage, I'll uh, uh, go back to the DG to close, uh, uh, I mean, make uh, closing remarks in the absence of the minister or deputy minister. Uh, before we we close this uh, part, uh, DG. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Chairperson, and uh, we 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 really appreciate this opportunity. Um, and uh, and yes, on, uh, Honorable uh, Tim, we will we will we will welcome uh, that 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 uh, that that uh, uh, lecture uh, so that we we are also. Uh, on on the same on the same page, we are aware of these these uh, these banks, honourable chairperson. That's why I was saying without without punting a specific bank, because at the moment really it's pretty much one bank that is that is in that space and kind of uh, dominating that particular space. But we, we wouldn't want to go into the details of the specifics of it. Um, but any any entrepreneur, in our view. Um, if there is a platform where that entrepreneur, remember this is got this is blended financing that we are dealing with. If 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 that bank is willing to give uh, part of the loan to this particular individual who's coming to the TEF, well and good, we'll be happy with that to say someone is coming already with a certain amount of money into this thing, so we'll be able to get uh, traction from there. So. The more the merrier, and we are we are much more happy. But we would not want a situation where uh, these businesses that we are trying to ensure that there's inclusivity are unable to actually rise above their debt um, and 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 begin to 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 really operate sustainably. And hence our our emphasis on ensuring that at least there is this component that we have put in, which is the the grant component, which will soften uh, the blow, so to say. But overall, uh, we have taken into account all the guidance that we received in this uh, briefing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, DJ, uh, and also the chairperson of uh, CIFA and the CFO uh, and the DDG and all uh, uh, officials uh, from uh, the department as well as uh, from uh, CIFA. Thank you very much for coming and uh, making a presentation to us. Uh, but it also has uh, perhaps uh, opened our eyes as well uh, as uh, members of uh, uh, the committee. Um, um, perhaps uh, we, we need to consider as a committee, uh, particularly on the issue of uh, triple BEE, uh, perhaps just to get uh, a presentation. Fortunately, uh, DTIC, uh, the Department of Trade and Industry and Competition, is a, co is a department that uh, reports uh, to this uh, uh, committee. Uh, we could uh, invite them because uh, they are custodian of the, of the, of the act on the triple BEE. Uh, they are the ones who are also issuing out uh, uh, the sector codes. Um, so we could uh, invite them first to give us a the, the strategy that was developed in 2003 uh, on the triple BEE, as well as the, the act uh, that was also uh, promulgated, I think, on the same year, uh, and as well as the amendments uh, that took place uh, uh, later, uh, the, uh, the, the generic uh, uh, codes uh, of, uh, of good practice, 
uh, uh, yes, as well as uh, the, the sector um, uh, codes uh, that have been adopted by uh, various sectors like tourism, ICT, and so forth. Uh, if they can uh, uh, take us through that so that we contextualize then the, uh, uh, the, 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 the strategies that are employed by sectors such as tourism, ICT, uh, and all other sectors. Uh, perhaps that's that's what we could do, but also the advice uh, uh, the DG was uh, given to us that perhaps we should at some stage also invite the tourism sector, Triple B E Council, uh, to 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 brief us as a committee uh, on the achievement in terms of the targets of uh, all these elements uh, of of the codes, uh, the ownership. Uh, management, uh, skills development, um, uh, enterprise uh, and supply development, as well as the socio-economic development, if uh, they can brief us uh, on, on those elements as well. Um, so thank you very much, uh, uh, DG and the uh, team, as well as the uh, chairperson of CIFA. Uh, um, at this stage, we will uh, uh, release you. Um, we'll continue with the with the internal matters uh, like the adoption of uh, uh, minutes, uh, but also honorable members, uh, as we know, tomorrow is the uh, uh, June 16th public holiday. We're not going to be able to have uh, the select committee on the public, uh, uh, public, uh, I mean, on transport, uh, public uh, uh, service and administration and uh, as well as the uh, public uh, works and infrastructure. We won't have that committee to, tomorrow because of the public holiday. So the chairperson of the committee has requested that after uh, this meeting, uh, we, co we convene again immediately after this meeting so that uh, we consider the business of uh, uh, that committee. So after we adopted the minute, the two set of meeting, minutes of this committee, will then uh, hand over to the chairperson uh, of the select committee uh, to preside over the next uh, uh, committee meeting. Um, can we then uh, uh, have uh, the minutes uh, flight head? Thank you, DG and the team. So we've got two sets. There's the minutes of the 1st of June, as well as the minutes of the 8th. Uh, last week, uh, we continued beyond 6 uh, p.m. and we could not adopt the minutes of the 1st and we deferred them to this meeting. Um, can we uh, go down? Um, can, uh, Honorable Ma oh, Matebola always uh, insists that uh, we should uh, write a BT, not just be Matebola, BT. If, uh, I uh, did. Uh, uh, I spoke to Madia, but Madia, uh, she's got uh, technical problems with her laptop. Uh, she was unable to join us, so I did uh, tell her when she sent the minutes uh, on Saturday uh, that she should make sure that uh, I'm sure the next uh, set will have BT. Uh, so, this Grace, take into account that in future uh, we will include the T next to B. Yeah. Okay. So other than that, uh, yeah. Other than, than that, uh, uh, can we just hear from uh, honorable members if there are any corrections or omissions? Uh, if not, can we then have a mover in the seconder for the adoption of the minutes of the 1st of June? Um, chair? I have to move, Chairperson. Uh, just before that, uh, honorable Boshoff? Yeah, I was just going to move that we um, adopt the minutes. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I take it that uh, Honorable Django, you also second it? Yes, I will second it. Thanks. Thanks very much. Uh, so there's, uh, is there any contrary view? Not. Okay. Can we then flight the next set, the minutes of the 8th of uh, June? Can we scroll down, please? Oh, yeah, you've got P PT there. The Honorable Matthew must be happy.
Thank you. Are there any corrections, omissions? Uh, if not, can we have a mover in the second for the adoption of the minutes of the 8th of June, 2021? I move, sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Moima. Can we please have a second? Uh? I second, Honorable uh, Chairperson, Honorable Moshodi. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Moshodi. Uh, any contrary view? Uh, not. Uh, thank you very much, uh, honorable members. Uh, minutes, both sets of minutes have been uh, uh, adopted. Um, let me then formally thank you for attending the meeting and also your participation. Uh, this part of the committee meeting is then uh, closed and therefore the meeting is adjourned uh, till uh, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday we'll be dealing with the Department of um, trade, industry, and competition uh, on the master plans and uh, on automotive sector, as well as the poultry industry. Uh, thank you very much, uh, honorable uh, members. Uh, honorable uh, Moimank, uh, back to you, thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, honorable chair. Uh, let me take this opportunity to indeed uh, express uh, my appreciation for your, for your gesture in terms of uh, allowing us as the select committee to do the unfinished business from, uh, from last week. Uh, you remember that uh, last week we, we received a presentation from the, the Department of Transport uh, and uh, uh, following the input that we made, uh, we then agreed that we'll probably find a slot to, to finally adopt the report. Uh, so without any waste of time, uh, allow me to to hand over to the committee secretary just to, to fly the report uh, so that at least there is a, a semblance of uh, understanding what are we talking about. Uh, uh, thank you, Chairperson. We've already fired the report. And also I can just remind members in terms of how it, we are going to process uh, <coughs> this report. This report is going to, uh, to be processed according to uh, rule number 115 subsection one, which subsection two, which reads as follows. When a question that does not fall under section 75 of the constitution is to be decided, committee members representing at least five provinces or six provinces in the case of constitutional amendment must be present. And the question is decided by supporting vote of at least five provinces or six provinces in the case of constitutional amendment. Thank you, Chairperson. So what basically the rules is instructing us here is that uh, this report is going to be adopted at a province, not per individual. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Having uh, having had that opportunities, can we then agree that uh, we you uh, then uh, take the members just to through the report to get a sense as to whether are they happy with what has been presented? Thank you, Chairperson. I think we must just move straight to the to number item number three because yes, that is the Item number three, and Enrico. Uh, uh, just remember, remember the, 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 the inputs that were made by members. We just want to get a sense of whether those uh, inputs are correctly captured. Yes, Chairperson, the inputs are from 3.1 to 3.4. Okay, good. Beautiful. Thanks. Must I read them? One by one. That, that, that's correct, yes, Okay, thank you, Chairperson. The Department of Transport briefed the committee on 9 June 2021. On the same day, the committee deliberated and made the following input. 3.1. The, the driving license testing centers, DLTC, to address all the difficulties experienced by the public when renewing licenses. 
the Department of Transport should create an interface on its website for electronic license renewal. 3.3, the committee urged the provincial departments of transport and municipalities to adopt the, the digital licenses licensing system. And the Department of Transport was urged to roll out infrastructure to accommodate accessibility for people living with disabilities. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank, thank you, thank you, uh, Committee Secretary, uh, for uh, taking us through that. Uh, uh, probably before the, we came with the matter of adoption, uh, is there any input from honorable members in terms of uh, ascertaining to whether the, the report correctly captures what was uh, reflected uh, on last week's meeting? Are we happy? Uh, that uh, sure. uh, Tim, another Tim. Yes, Chair. Just a uh, Chair. Uh, it's it's not no problem with the report, but on reflection, I think as a committee we should consider that when we make these inputs, and uh, unless they are rejected by the department, we should actually maybe in future put timelines on them. That, for instance, in two months' time, this. The, this entity comes back to us with a update on our suggestions, on our inputs. We've given them a lot of action steps here and I hope it doesn't float away, you know. <laughs> I hope we can hold them accountable to see if they can, uh, can comply with these inputs because I think all these inputs are extremely valid. Thank you, Chair. Thank, 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 thank you, Honorable, uh, honorable Tim Patterson, uh, for, for that. Indeed, uh, in terms of improving... Uh, the monitoring and, uh, and, 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 and evaluation uh, timelines are quite important. I agree 100% with you. So, honorable members, the, the question uh, to, to be put to the members is that the report be agreed to. I uh, will request uh, honorable members, uh, as per the guidelines provided by the secretary, just to indicate uh, by a show of hands in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, 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 those that, uh, that agree with the report. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Honorable Mashuri, I agree with the report. Thank you, Honorable Mashuri. Chairperson? Chairperson, are we voting for province? Chairperson, I would also request yes, us at least to mention the province. Okay. Thank uh, you very much. Thank you, Honorable. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Honorable Mashuri from the Free State. I agree with the report. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Mishori. Uh, Honorable, uh, uh, Honorable uh, Pashov. Honorable, Honorable Chair Honorable. from Gauteng, we agree with the report. Thank you, Honorable, uh, Honorable Dango. Honorable uh, uh, Hai. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I support uh, the, I'm voting in favor uh, of the adoption of the report. Thank you, Honorable Hai. Honorable Tim. Thank you, Honorable Chair. KZN is in agreement. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Honorable uh, Tim Radaseth from KZN. Uh, Honorable Boshoff. Thank you, Chair. Sorry, I took a little comfort break. Um, and Pomalanga also in support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Bashoff. Honorable Matibula. Right. Looks like we have lost Honorable Matibula. Uh, uh, Honorable Muimam from the, from the Northern Cape Province also agree with the report. So I take that uh, we have. Uh, uh, all the members that are that are attending from the, our respective provinces uh, have uh, endorsed the report, uh, and therefore the report is agreed to. Uh, any 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 reflection thereafter, uh, committee secretary? Uh, thank you, chairperson. Uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to reflect that. Uh, <clears throat> This question has been supported by five provinces. So then it means the committee now agreed that uh, 
it can be sent to the house. Thank you for that reflection. Uh, the, the, therefore, the, the, the committee report will be forwarded to the house for adoption. Uh, the, 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 the 26 map, provinces, Chair. Six provinces, yes. Yes. Yeah. Correction. Six oh, provinces. Okay. Uh, six provinces. Thank you. For, thank you for thank that you correction. Uh, yeah. Six thank provinces. you for that uh, for that correction, Honorable Kai. Uh, the minutes, Tubera. Uh, and Rico. Uh, and I remember those are the minutes of the of the 26th of May. Uh, no, 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 no. No, no, it's June. Correction, Jefferson. It's June. It's June. Like this week. Correction. It's yeah. June. Well, Packard likes to remember my birthday, you see. <laughs> <laughs> but now you eat the cake alone. You eat the cake alone, Tim. That's why he forgets. He, he flies. I, I will bring cake when we reconvene in person, Jay. I will bring <laughs> a reminder. Thank you. We can have, we can have a, a tea party virtually. <laughs> uh, and the numbers, those, those are the reflection in terms of uh, what uh, what you have just adopted. Uh, let's go to the attendees and see as to whether it correctly captures those that attended. Uh, uh, any correction thereof, uh, honorable members? Uh, let's go to the trust of the of the of the minutes. Uh, those were the guests uh, from the department and the staff of the of, of, of the of the committee. And the reflection that we made uh, with regard to uh, opening remarks, apologies, and then the how the proceedings unfolded, uh, including the background, the approach, safety, and security, the queue management, parking forms, equipment, facilities, and client communication, right up to 3.10, which deals with the city from it. Those were the issues that, 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 that were reflected, and then uh, followed by the comments and deliberations. Uh, from uh, the committee members. I, I just saw something on the apologies. If you can go I, up. Uh, okay. The apology for Mr. Mkuno, I don't know, he's not a minister responsible for this uh, entity. <laughs> it must I'm be sure Balula. <laughs> yeah. As your honorable uh, Minister Mbalula, right? Let's let's go there. Under two, yeah, two, two apologies. The apology from Minister Mtuno. Oh, yes, oh. Oh, yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. It's so, supposed uh, to be Mbalula, not Mtuno. Mbalula, yes, yes. Uh, 100%, uh, I'm 100% with you, honorable Kai. Thank you for, for that yeah. alertness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, honorable members of those corrections, can we get a mover then for the adoption of the minutes uh, through reflection of what transpired? <clears throat> I move Richard, for the take time on the inputs. Um, can, oh. Sorry, Rebecca, okay. can you go back on the inputs, please? Inputs, okay. Let's go to the inputs. I just want to make sure they're in line with the report. Uh, which bullet point, uh, Tim? No, Chair, I'm just trying to make sure that they're in line with the report because they reflect oh, what our report says. Oh, yeah, in terms of the recommendations that we have just adopted, yes? Yes, yeah. So if we can go to 433, three, please. 433, three, three, yes. Yeah, no, that's, that's fine, Chair. Uh, so, Chair, yes, I did pick this up. The 433, um, three, you'll see the sentence... Okay, no, that's fine. I was concerned that there was a rep repetition of the, uh, the first and second sentence here. They were just saying the same thing, but effectively okay. they say something different. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, that's, the, that, that's more preparation, yes. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Can you take out that uh, part that says living with disability and say people with disability? People with disability, they don't like uh, that, that part that is living. Yeah. Agree. Agree. Yeah, that's a people with disability. Uh, Chairperson, if we're going to talk about language, then maybe we shouldn't use the word disabilities, but rather physically challenged. <laughs> I hope you don't want to change now the trust of the meeting on the Dango. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, let's 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 remove uh, people with let's remove living uh, uh, because I think it has been uh, canvassed uh, within 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 uh, uh, discarded uh, and also reservations were raised with it. I 100% agree with Honorable High. Uh, with those corrections, Honorable Members, can we then get a mover? I so move, Chairperson. Thank you, thank you, Honorable. Jay, 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 if, I, if I might just say something. Yes, Honorable uh, Tim. And I don't want to change the minutes, but yeah. the, the correct terminology now is not disability, it's al alternatively abled. <laughs> well, and yeah, it's I true if you think about it. A blind yeah. person has a much better sense of smell and hearing. They are they're alternately abled, and that's very true. But anyway, I'm not saying we must change the minutes, but maybe in future. I, I guess that, 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 that was also seconding uh, Tim. Yeah, I'll second the minutes, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Tim, for, for seconding. So therefore, honorable members, the minutes are duly adopted as a true reflection of what transpired. Uh, we, <clears throat> we, we, we therefore, we therefore, we therefore uh, uh, want to, to, to probably, maybe just before we close, get a sense uh, uh, of progress from uh, the issue of uh, management, management committee, uh, did the management meet? Remember, we said we need to before we we adjourn, or is it a, is it a, a work in progress in planning for the oversight? Thank you, Chairperson. Yes, it's a work in progress, but we've been interacting. I mean, as uh, staff members and you know, as officials, All right. we are just still like waiting for the departments to give us what we've requested from them. So okay. that it assist us in the proper planning of the oversight. But, uh, but, but, but I want to believe that uh, Honorable Chai, we, we will probably have to, 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 to find a way to before we before we 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 we, we attend uh, uh, for, for, for constituency and recess, uh, take uh, the committee members on board. What's your view on that? <clears throat> I suggest you chair that perhaps on, on Wednesday, because it will be the last time that we meet as a as a two committees, that then on Wednesday, the uh, part of the agenda item, we, we include the, the oversight visit with uh, all the details. Um, yeah, uh, but uh, before that, uh, perhaps we should have a joint management committee meeting uh, where we get then the briefing from the, from the staff. Maybe this thank week or, or Monday. Yeah. Right. Thanks, thanks, Chair. No, th 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 thanks, Chair, for, 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 for that uh, uh, intervention. Uh, what's uh, having uh, dealt with that, uh, honorable members, I want to, to then uh, believe that we have uh, dealt with the items on the agenda, Shupega. Am I, am yes, I correct? Yes. All right. All right. With that, then let me take this opportunity to express. Uh, on behalf of the committee, uh, uh, my heartfelt gratitude to, to all of you, uh, and also particularly the, the chair of the State Committee of Trade, uh, giving us an opportunity to, to tighten our things so that at least uh, we have no outstanding uh, or any, any matters as we move into the third term. So uh, the, 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 the gratitude is, is, is uh, highly extended to, to, to you, Chair, and honorable members, and also the support staff for ensuring that uh, we're able to finally, as a committee, uh, 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 tighten this uh, minimum standards and then recommend them to the House for adoption. Thank you, honorable members. Uh, the meeting is therefore adjourned. Let's prepare ourselves for the two o'clock house sitting and plan Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Chair. Thanks. Recording Thank stopped. Bye. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Hi, Chair. This is Come back. Uh, can oh, we request the staff members to remain behind?
No, not bonke galoka lekho. Abekho bonke? No bensitho okay. wena. Oh, okay. Bensitho yeah. wena ubu athendile la meeting? Yes, 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 mbindi athendile. So I cause changes oversight is aba aizoba virtual. Uh, what has been agreed upon or what has been said in that meeting is that well let's prepare let's continue with, uh, with our preparation these committees yeah. the application and all that mm. thereafter then uh, <clears throat> the office of the house chair yeah will revert back to us after co consulting with the powers that be in terms of the head the issues of health and all that, whether at least these this oversight will proceed as virtual or, <laughs> yeah, or then at least we'll have to go there, you know, like normal oversight. <laughs> but why is it taking so long for them to decide this? Yeah, and, hey, yeah no, it's okay. And the yeah. parliament streaming, I hope at least you're not streaming this conservation, eh? Yeah, they are, yeah, they are still here. They're still here. Oh, the meeting yeah. is up. Okay, let's talk here, uh, if only. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs>